um, our early warning, early action system, where, where we've seen great progress with that. In, instead of waiting for a drought to be declared, the first signs of um, low rainfall, this system allows for us to, and with local communities, to program straight away. So instead of waiting for animals to die, you can truck in water beforehand. So all of these activities together, hopefully, kind of ensure if there's a drought, there's not going to be a famine. Disaster risk reduction really looks at reducing risk. So that might be we build flood defences or we look at, I don't know, different types of barriers. Resilience also aims for longer, form, cha longer term change or development. So instead of just re reducing the risk of a flood by building a dam, you might put things in place, systems and structures that contribute towards longer term development over time. So, for example, harness the flood water so that animals have a place to drink. Um, disaster risk reduction would normally focus on a specific hazard and how to address a short term crisis. But when you look at resilience, you may be looking at things like, for example, if there's a security issue, you might look at long, longer term things like, okay, there's a security issue, so the urban labor market is disrupted. So therefore, it's the laborers that we need to, we need to address here to ensure that it's not just a short term crisis, but like there's longer term opportunities. And I think the main difference between DRR and resilience is DRR tries to reduce risk, but resilience is short term crisis, longer term risk, but also longer term opportunity. And I think that's where DRR probably falls down. Humanitarians, I think if they uh, deal with uh, food supply in general, they do well in coordinating also with the people working on food security and on agricultural policy in order to help those actors on the development side to understand where are the bottlenecks, where, where are the weaknesses in the agricultural production because the humanitarians will understand it because they see the famine coming but they can help actually saying to those that run the agricultural sector program that we need more millet there, we need a food bank so that we don't have to come back a year after etc etc. So the humanitarians have an important role to transmit the knowledge about risks and fragility to their development counterparts. Local organizations oftentimes are started by members of the local community in response to a problem that they see, whether it's a humanitarian problem or a development problem. So they're part of the communities. They are an integral part of the communities. They understand the context, they understand the issues, they understand what is the right solution to the problem. Uh, they understand how to resolve the problem, resilience building. You're not going to build resilience in London for people in Kenya. You're not going to do that. You're only going to do resilience, proper resilience building if you invest in local capital, in local human environmental uh, systems. That's how you build resilience and economic systems and environmental systems and human capital, leadership capital. That's how you build resilience. You're not going to build it through uh, a model in, in another country. That's not going to happen. So. I think the conversation with resilience is allowing us to have a conversation about local capacity that's long overdue.